The AAW supports your total learning experience provided to our nearly 16,000 members and 365 local chapters throughout the country. Please enjoy this woodturning tip from an AAW woodturning master. Happy turning! Hi, my name is Donna Zills Banfield. I'm from Derry, New Hampshire. I'm a full-time woodturner and I've been turning since about 2002. I'm here in Portland, Oregon. I'm here demonstrating for the International Symposium of the AEW, and I'd like to share some tips on how to take your wood burning and pyro engraving to the next level. What I have here is a wood burning tip that is an eighth inch radius skew. And I don't need to have a lot of heat on it, but what I do need to make sure is that it's sharp. So this is I'm going, to, I'm going to show you how I sharpen my tip. This is an old diamond stone. Old meaning I've already used it up on my wood turning tools. And I very slowly slide the edge on both sides. And I have no heat coming through the pen right now. And I just want to take that to a nice, fine, crisp edge. Not that different from a carving or turning tool. Next, I'm going to use a piece of leather chamois that's been honed, um, prepared with a honing compound. And this is the product that I use, but any honing compound can be used. If you do honing or carving, anything will work. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to draw this across the area. And that's going to allow me to move my tool through the wood. It will actually cut in or incise the wood even if I don't have a heat source. And this is what will allow me to get those very, very tight, crisp lines without the burn pattern spreading out. Now you might notice that I'm using um, a piece of equipment over my head. They are magnifiers. I have found that as I've gotten older, I don't see as well. So the work that I do is very fine, very detailed, and I want to be able to see it as clearly as possible. So whenever I do any of this work, I'm going to use the magnifiers. There are a lot of them out there. Um, no one particular one is better than the other. And there are different focal lengths. So pick one that works for you, um, and maybe more than one will work. So what I'm going to do right now is I've got my heat set, and I'm just going to do some practice lines. And I always want to test how much heat I have on a scrap piece of wood before I use the pen on my turning. Because this type of work, there is zero room for error. If I make a mistake, or if I've got my heat too hot on my pen, and I get a large burn mark, and I'll show you what I'm referring to, I'm just going to add a little bit more heat. Now I've got a lot of heat and I've got a blotchy, blotchy line. And if I'm doing fine detail work, that's not, that's not desirable for my work. So I'm going to crank that down a little bit. And the wood that I'm using for th this demonstration is nothing more than a piece of poplar, but I've also used cherry, um, any maple. I love fruit, using the fruit woods. Um, for most of my wood burning work, the straight grain closed pour work best. Okay, so now you see the lines are nice and smooth. And when I'm going to use my pen, they call these pens, but they don't work like pens. Think of it more like a paintbrush. So if this was a paintbrush, I'm going to bring the tool down, or I'm going to land the plane, and the plane takes off. I don't use it like a pen, but more like a paintbrush. And when I'm going to do curves, I want to keep the pen moving continuously. 
and I'm rolling my finger and my thumb so that the pen is moving across the wood. And if I'm doing a series of lines, I like to keep the line that I'm working on all the work that I've done I want to keep to the left of my pen so I can see where my tip is. Because if I come to this side I can't see through my pen how close I am. But if I'm on this side I can see exactly how close I am. And different woods react differently. I'll put aside this piece of poplar and I'll come to a piece of rock maple. And because the rock maple is a little more dense than poplar, which even though it qualifies as a hardwood, it's fairly soft. So I may need to increase my heat a little bit or slow my movement down. And if I've taken the pen on one line a little bit too far, I can always, because I've sharpened and honed my tip and it cuts, I can find where that line was and just put my tip right back in that line and extend the line. I'll show you again what I mean. So I'm going to put a line here. And I'm going to go beyond that line. All I want to do is extend this line to that point and because I've cut the wood with this sharpened tip I can pick that right up. I'll do it again. And with practice, you're able to put that line, extend that line without it showing that, oh, I made a mistake and I have to pick up that line. How's that? Okay. That was my tip. I hope that you um, find this very helpful for you. And don't forget to practice, practice, practice. <laughs>